Hey, this is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys, and I love the Grandstanders! <laughs> Take it away, kid! <laughs> I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, the professor, Russ Stevens, <laughs> Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's Milton's first son, Tim Hoey. Well, we have a great show for you tonight, so boys, let's get it started. First of all, breaking news from the Grandstanders Live desk, Patriots Rex Burkhead and what, Bentley, Juwan Bentley. Juwan Juwan Bentley, Bentley yeah. who is the only linebacker we have that has done yeah. anything in three games, yeah. has been put on IR for the season. No, no, no. We're designated for return. Yeah, oh, I one have of them, game so one of them could yeah. return, right? Yeah. One of them could return. Just the word I heard was Burkhead's done. Yeah. Is that, is Which that has been a complete, he's been a complete He trail. was designated, though. You can designate it. He's hurt. He was hurt every game, every other game. Yeah, he looked good when he played for that short period of time. Yeah, right. But you got to be durable in the NFL, and he was not. No. Yeah. Dion so, Lewis would look good right now. Just oh. another loss oh. that we're taking each day. It yeah. gets worse and worse for the Patriots. So, we first of all, we've got to uh, thank and welcome Worcester. WCCA TV Worcester. in Worcester. Yep. Welcome. welcome to the Grandstanders Worcester. Live. Yeah, it's good to have you. Um, and uh, 49,000 no, new households. And are here Worcester, the new home show. of the, the Worcester Red Worcester Sox. Red Sox. Yeah, so hopefully right. we'll get Larry Lucchino on. All right, Sox. so the Pats lose 26 to 10. If you had watched this show uh, last week, you would realize that the only person who predicted the wipeout mm. of the Detroit Lions was me, guys. Even a blind could... mouse finds a piece of cheese. <laughs> oh, no, so he said it, not me. One no. out of a thousand. Are you going to give me credit? Uh, am I, I give you credit? credit. I give you credit. And I give you credit now for being so down on them for the absolutely. His prediction average is right around the Mendoza line. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. told you, fellas. I said nine and seven. Okay. Oh, you guys ripped uh, me. But let's a long be honest, way to go before nine and seven is ambitious right now. No. Yeah, I don't. I'm <laughs> not buying that. Nope. I'm not moving off my eleven. Yeah, I'll take the eleven, 11 and five, five until it happens. No, no, I, right? I'll go down. I'm going to believe what my eyes told me Sunday night. They are done. Mm. Chris Collingsworth, who I hate, and I've hated for a oh, long like time. Him. So, right, okay. Um, and I think he's a Patriots hater. Uh, and he's said, Oh, he loves the oh, Patriots. Oh, no, he doesn't. But he, when he said the line that he had not seen holes like that since Pee Wee football, <laughs> it, it was could shocking. not have been more accurate. It was shocking yeah, it was to watch. Frightening to watch. Shocking. There, was, there were no Patriots anywhere to be found mm. on the field. No talent and no emotion, would you and agree? And no yeah. game plan. Right. The, the, the student outfoxed the teacher dramatically on this one yeah Patricia's offensive game plan was impressive they, they just had he had every answer for whatever the Patriots were doing see but Would to you, me I don't I don't know Chris. I didn't think it was really anything that Detroit was doing anything special but it was just the Patriots well I think Patricia up. clearly was going at certain guys with certain plays like he knew he could exploit certain aspects of the Patriots defense and and then you give them credit they executed look Detroit also executed really well the other night that offensive line played really well for we, the for the Lions. The Patriots have the ability to make every quarterback we play against have the game of their life. We've, it looks like we have paid, played at the three all-pro quarterbacks in the well, league. Well, Stafford's a good quarterback, but well, he's not that good. He, no, but he gave five interceptions to the dog-ass Jets. Well, well that's what I was going to say when you were last looking at the Lions, which mm -hmm. was two weeks ago against yeah. the Jets in a nationally televised mm -hmm. game. They got absolutely wiped and out. And they'll stink again next week. And no. Bortles, like, you know, came down to earth after he played us. When, yeah, Bortles, our, is Bortles our, 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 our two field goals against Our defensive Remy backfield Tennessee. isn't within five yards of their receivers. It is insanity to watch. I was sick to my stomach. So, guys, we lost Malcolm Butler. We lost Deion Lewis. We lost Nate Solder. We lost Danny Amendola. And we lost Brandon Cooks. How do you think that you can continue to turn over these great players, okay, and 
continue to have a team the, that's worthy do of any, Super Bowl. Do we have any rookies left on the team from what right. we started out with this year? I don't think there's – is there any? Yeah, no, wynn has gone – well, uh, Sony Michelle. Sony right. Michelle. He's look, the only survivor. way you can withstand the loss of those guys is to replace them with guys that work out. And look, there were a number of years during this whole era – where he went into a year and he replaced guys and it worked out really well. It has not worked out well for basically three years now. Right. He is not replacing guys who they're losing because of two things. One, the draft picks are flaming out left and right. Some by bad luck and some right. just flamed out. And the other is the free agents that he's trying to strike on have not panned out. That's what you're left with. Right. And he spent big money on Gilmore last year. So right. we have to give him give this props on that. Yeah. Absolutely. And Gilmore is a solid player. Yeah. Even this year, he's been solid. But otherwise... Oh, I mean, Dwayne, has, yeah, Dwayne Allen, right? Right. Uh, Burkhead didn't right. pan out. Right? No, no, There's absolutely There's a lot not. of guys that... Gillisley. Gillisley didn't pan out, right? right? I'd say probably Joe Joe loves the, the, the defensive line stuff. Lawrence Guy... Is probably the, the second best, best yeah. guy they've brought in in the last three years. Maybe, yeah, right. maybe the, right, right, I'm not right. even kidding. And that's frightening. Maybe yeah. the offensive lineman who's uh, replacing Solder. He he's not playing bad. Trent, the big Robert, dude on yeah. on the left tackle. Sure, there. And, yeah. and he could work out. Yeah, but when you're talking about all those guys they lost. They didn't replace by the draft. Some of it's bad luck. A couple guys got injured, but these other guys are just. But not then they doing they well. draft Isaiah Wynn. Now there's no position for him. He was supposed right. to be like. Insurance against Shaq Mason leaving in free agency. But when Wynn got hurt, yeah. they signed Shaq Mason. Now Wynn has no position. Joe, he you wasted a first round pick. Your, your glaring needs were linebacker and wide receiver. Yep. You didn't have to be yeah. study the Patriots long to figure yeah. that out. And we not only didn't we not address mm-hmm. these needs, mm-hmm. in wide receiver, we got rid of Brandon Cooks. Mm-hmm. And no Danny matter what Amidola. you say, a yeah. thousand plus uh, mm-hmm. yard guy. And Danny Amendola, one of the clutch. Patriots of all time. You would watch Brady go back, and you could see he had nobody to throw. Now I don't know if nobody was open. Like it was, he didn't trust anyone to be there other than Gronk, anyone to be where they were supposed to be. And you could see the frustration in him uh, on the sidelines. Well, now part of that might be he didn't come to the OTAs and build a relationship and a trust with these guys. It's like the perfect storm uh, right now of all these bad things. One here, one there, one there, and there. Oh, this is and it's all coming to fruition. Cordell yeah. Patterson. Oh. Oh, he threw him up He caught it. He's wide open, caught it, and then tripped over his own feet. Hogan, Patterson, and Dorsett, and we trust. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. seriously. Hogan, if he's your fourth guy, is great. Yeah, he's yeah. not your first guy. The biggest concern that you have to have for the rest of the year. Because you look, I think the offense will come around. It usually comes around. So let's just assume that it gets into some semblance of shape. The team speed, the lack of team speed on defense. Right. You can't make yes, up for that. I know. No. Right. You can't. Like I don't know yeah. how he's going to scheme around it, and, and he, it'll get better because it got better in the same way last year. But there's a limit to how good this team Russell, can be defensively. When your linebackers are that slow. You don't have a chance. Right. How you are, are going to get exposed. You right. can run up as many hills as you'd like. You ain't yeah. getting any faster yeah. at 20 no. you can do years the, old. You can do that in college. You can't do it in the pros. This league is so fast right now. Yeah. If you are lacking at the linebackers, yeah. they are going to toast and you. And they were talking about this on the uh, on the telecast like it was an advantage for the Patriots. Like The Patriots linebackers are so big. Their linebackers yeah. are – all of them are oversized. As far as I could tell in the NFL game these days – the whole thing about being a linebacker is to go sideline from sideline and cover yeah. guys out of the backfield. It's a passing. They were just film. trying to say something good about the Patriots, and, yeah. <laughs> and they were reaching. Linebackers it's, have to cover the tight ends that's and the right. backs. Now, half <coughs> time, you know, when they came out and showed a little life at the beginning of the first half, did you think, oh, here we go, the Pats are going to take it? Beginning of the it second half? Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. they got them. They had a second and 17, and you're thinking, if we stop them here, we go down and score. This is a tie Patriots game or we're up, thing. Yeah. right? And second and 17, oh. and they get 10 and another 11, and it was all over. Well, you shouldn't have to coach up emotion. Clearly, they yeah. showed no emotion in the yeah. first half. He must have yelled at him the whole 12 minutes mm. because <laughs> Wise makes a tackle maybe for a yeah. yard, and he goes absolutely yeah, ballistic like, like he has <laughs> bugs on him or something. You know, has yeah. Brady lost some leadership credibility from uh, being absent this summer in the well, locker room? A, I don't know about that. No, but but I, I, know, but I would, Scotty, I would, say, you know I would I mean? say that Brady moped. The whole game oh, he on was, the sidelines. Well, no, he only sulked in the second half. He was sulking. But he was making faces. You don't see the defense making the faces and when throwing the ball away. When, when Brady's doing stupid stuff like you know throwing up fair catches uh, for the <laughs> defenders, right? Yeah. 
Look, we've seen this before out of him. The, 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 Remember, he used to do it with Randy Moss all the time. Yeah, look, uh, I, again, not, there was no lower point that I can remember than that after that KC game a few years ago. And we were, I wrote Brady off. I'm like, this guy looks like he's just gone off a cliff, right? Yeah, so looking like he had no arm strength. It looks like he had nothing left. So let's, I think within the next two or three weeks, my guess is this offense will come around. I just don't think there's fixing this defense. I don't either. I, I, I don't, I've always had faith in the Patriots. I don't right now. Yeah. But where are we? Okay, now the Gronk to Detroit Lions has been legitimized. Yeah. Okay, yep. that was a trade yeah. that was completed, and Gronk nixed it. Yeah. He said he would retire before leaving the Patriots. And okay. he validated Schefter's uh, tweet about that. You know, Gronk isn't as dumb as people think. No, no. When he wants to get his message out. Yeah. He gets it out. Okay, so boys, Gronk was going to be traded for either this was because it was a rebuild, Right? Or sabotage by Belichick. He wants to sabotage. Well, we don't know what they... Yeah, I don't think he wants to sabotage the team, but he does want to... Well, what part did Gronk play in this, too? He was, you know, off riding motocross bikes and talking about, I don't know if I'm coming back or not. I mean, he did have a part to play in this. It's not like he was all in with the Patriots all summer. Hmm. He was like the mystery man. Is Gronk going to play? Isn't he going to play? What's he going to do? Well, all I do had to do is call him up and say, you know, we're interested in trading you. Um, Mm -hmm. What's the deal? And he said, no, don't. It's hard to imagine what they would have gotten back for Gronk that would have helped us this year. Well, we right? would have at, at a fourth. Tra- at the tra- no, the tra- tra- no, but, I mean, the uh, Schefter said it was just draft pick. Because it was draft day that they were talking. Yeah. So you figure it was, it was not a first-round pick. Joe says it. Yeah. No, no way. It's, you figure a second and a fourth. Yeah, I, I make that speculation. I have no idea what it is, but it, it probably wouldn't have helped this year. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of making your point, right? right. Like trading Gronk for just draft picks, even if it's a first, no one was walking in the door being. Gronk. We could draft a wide receiver that doesn't make the team. But that <laughs> sends a message. That sends a message. Then all of a sudden, you have a sixth <laughs> player that has left yeah. this team. That yeah. sends a mis- message that we're not winning the Super Bowl this year. Oh my God! Yeah, make been, the, let's look. make the playoffs right now. No, but I'm saying, can you imagine this team without Gronk? Let's Miami this week. I know. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Is this a rebuild? The only like, way that I can guarantee a Patriots victory this week is if I put $100 on Miami. <laughs> on Miami. <laughs> that will guarantee a Patriots Okay, so you lose this weekend. You are basically four, four games, games out. out of first Who's place favorite? for the AFC. Who's favorite this week? Patriots. Oh, the Patriots at home. By seven? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you a scenario, guys. We lose to, uh, Sunday, and then we lose on Thursday to the Colts. We are now one in five. Do we trade Tom Brady? Oh, I, I doubt Brady's it. Problem. I, the problem is, is that you got no one to replace him, right? Like there's, there's. Yeah, what do you, you have? Nothing. You're you 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 giving up on the season. If, if you, you had that. Jimmy G on the team, right? The dearly departed Jimmy G. You're right, exactly. Oh, there he is. We have to say a little bit of ourselves. We have to genuflect. Oh, my God. St. Jimmy. God, he's boyfriend. He's still good. Does he need an ACL? He's still good. I can give him money. He's still good looking, though. He's still good looking. Exactly. If Jimmy G were on the team and they started off this badly, it would be pretty interesting around here. Yeah. Yes, if they're willing to trade Gronk for a couple of draft yeah. picks and Lions. Then, I, then I think Tom the bigger question you raise, which I hadn't thought of, is are we actually in the middle of a rebuild for the Patriots? We just don't even know it, right? Say it's stocked up on draft picks for next year. I think they've got more draft yeah. picks next year than, than any team in the NFL. First rounders? Right. Second rounders? Uh, they've no. got two, yeah, they've got two first rounders, no. two second rounders, I think two fourths or something like that. Like It's possible. Maybe one explanation for all this is they're just like, screw it, we're going to start a rebuild. We're just not going to advertise it. Right. But are you going to really play Tom Brady the rest of the season if you're 1-5? and five? Tom, Are you going to risk him getting hurt if he's your quarterback in 2019? I don't think Tom Brady's the problem. I, I think, think just the saying, problem is lack of anything on defense right now. Yeah. But, but uh, to Scott's point, Tom Brady might be your only bargaining chip, your only but asset to get you out of this. The only thing I would trade Tom Brady for is like to the worst team in the league for their first-round pick. And, and I yeah. know, and I'm looking at the point. quarterbacks trained, coming out of college, yeah. and I have to have identified yeah. the college quarterback that I have my eye on that I'm going to build this franchise around. Look, Other than that, I'm not getting rid of him. It's a fine line. Rebuild? We don't rebuild because we have Tom Brady. The moment Tom Brady's off this mm-hmm. team, it's an out-and-out rebuild. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. do you think Belichick's gone at that point, too? But do you think Tom Brady's going to want to play at one f- with a record of one and five? So, do you so, think he's going to want to play the rest of the so season? Who do you, so you think Miami wins this week, right? 
Well, we'll go the predictions, Joe. Okay. That's, that's, but I think that if Wait, Miami, what are right? what are no, right? I think no. if they lose the next two games, that they will trade Tom Brady for the fact that Tom Brady would like to play you can't important get games this year. What's Can that? I borrow that pen? I just want they will trade Tom Brady. Like they will trade Tom Brady at one and five. On <laughs> but Lodge should be doing Tom a favor because yeah. obviously they'll be Here's sending the him to a Brady. contending Brady. team that needs a quarterback. Brady, by all accounts, is one of the most competitive human beings who's ever lived. I don't. I think Brady, if Brady's one and five, he's going to think they're going to win the last mm. eight games, mm. right? Philip? So uh, yeah, I, I just don't well, think. I think there's no quit in that guy. He's probably the only shining spot right now on this. Yeah, him and Gronk are like it. Yeah. Look, the Patriots lose the next two games. All the Patriots fans are going to be absolutely sick and tired of this team. Are going to be focusing on the Red Sox and the Celtics, That's right. right? And are going to want everybody to be leaving. I'm just right? happy. Be- I'm, Belichick, I'm the Brady. box for another team. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> all right, I so, got that bill. All right, so we'll go to the uh, the predictions. Yeah. Um. Again, I you know yeah. I'm hot right now. Yeah. And uh, you know. One. Yo, you, you've got one, got one in a row. He's <laughs> one for three. The last time the it's Patriots hot. started out this poorly and Miami came to town, it was the Wildcat game that really sent them into a tailspin. All right, so, so yeah, why, why not? Miami come down. Gase has got them all revved up, but it's a tight, tight game, 21-20. They just barely squeak it out. They get the break that the Patriots usually get. Yeah. All right, Rusty boy. I, this is the game. Uh, th- th- it is sort of a make or break game. I do agree with you. And traditionally, this is the game they win. Uh, make or break when the chips are down. Yeah. It looks bleak. They come home. They yeah. win. They may win by a couple of touchdowns. I want to believe that. 28 to 14. I'm going to predict it until I see otherwise. This yeah. historically is the game they win. Okay. They lose 35 oh. to 10. Oh. Okay. And there's booing. By the third quarter, okay. and by the fourth quarter, the only people left are, have Dol- yeah. Dolphins jerseys on. I'm saying, uh, Miami wins 27-14. I see no nobody on defense that can do the job for the Patriots. I see nobody on offense that can do the job. They're going to triple-team Gronk, and the Patriots, to get those 14 points, are going to have to give it to who knows, like Joe from the stands, bring him down. And with Timmy's there, oh, I have t- little faith. Ryan Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill, Russ is a real Ryan fan. Tannehill will have these career games. <laughs> yes, right. uh, he will. He might set some records. <laughs> we're not here next week. Are you predicting next week's game that, too? No, no, we'll wait on that. Right. <laughs> no, it's Thursday. It's a Thursday night game, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Even worse. No, right, exactly. I, they yeah. always sure change the game plan on the, the the game before the Thursday game. Right. All right, we go to the. Boston oh, Red hey, I got one more question. Uh, so the next time we're back, they will have played five games. Right. What will be the Patriots' record the next time we're back here after five games? Two and three. Two and three. Yeah. I I say three and two. I say one and four. Oh, oh wow! Oh, oh, oh. Timmy's <laughs> got it. Timmy's hard. I saw what I saw. <laughs> Timmy's hard as he broken. inflated the light bulb. He is so happy, happy that he's not paying two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year for that box. Oh, oh my God! I'm, I'm sick. I'm physically ill. <laughs> I might lose another ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we go to the Red Sox. The most wins in the history of That's the amazing. Boston Red Sox. Amazing. Amazing. Good for them. Something yeah. special. Okay, boys. So this is special. 2007. Do you have any good feeling about the 2007 Patriots? Does that give you a warm and fuzzy There's feeling? No. Oh, feeling the fact that we I were, was there. The fact yeah. that we were 18 and 0. Boy, you are Mr. Negative no, but tonight. Right. No, but I'm saying, s- negativity it sells. It no, doesn't negativity matter sells. until they finish the job. We're I not going to get any joy out yeah, of Yeah, I think that's mostly right. Like, if they were in a seven-game yeah. World Series, uh, you know, classic seven-game, and they, they lose the seventh game, you say, all right, you know, that was... It's not going to be a profound Red Sox Cardinals. Right, right. And, like and there, there's varying five. degrees of how this could go well or badly, right? From here. That's true. Great point. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. If you lose to the A's in the first round, that's, that's really bad. That's going to be hard to defend. My yeah. new yeah. perspective is live in the moment. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. Right? Yeah. Your zen. Enjoy my zen. Right? <laughs> yeah. We went the other night. The Evaldi Rick pitched great. Theory. Right? Evaldi yeah. pitched great, that which was gives me hope for the bullpen. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I won't be surprised if we go against the Yankees if Evaldi pitches against the Yankees instead of Price when if it's Price's turn. No, no, no. no Price no, is no. going game two. I don't know. He I don't know. Going it's an game interesting two. point. No, he's going but game Evaldi two. will pitch against but the Evaldi Yankees. But Evaldi gave me I, some hope for the bullpen. I think Evaldi could go but, game but four. But Erod against he, the A's. He could go game four. Yeah, he could go game four. But there's no way that David think, Price, who I, deserves to pitch game two. Not in the he Yankee does. Stadium, though. He's like... No, no, he wouldn't be in... Game, game two would be, be here at Okay, but I mean, if, sure. if somehow whatever happens... Yeah. Um, you know, it I'm, ends up being I, I, Don't you imagine that Cora will keep his powder dry in terms of 
who the four starter is. If well, one of no, those, he said uh, it all depends whether it's the A's, the Yankees, and I think it's Evaldi against the Yankees, Erod against the A's. He's already said he. That's the decision he has to make, mm-hmm. depending on who. Erod who they looked play. good coming out of the pen. Look, fellas, it's going to be dependent on who. What, yeah, what it is. If you're game down four, if we're down two, two one, yeah. if we're down two one, it's called Chris Sale. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. my point yeah. is, if someone gets knocked out early, say Sale, God forbid, or Price gets knocked out early, it'll be he has the option of bringing in Stevaldi or Erod. Right, mm. he right. could bring yeah. in like say, say someone gets knocked out in the third inning, and I like how those two are looking right, right now. So that could affect who he starts late. He so. might even go with Stephen Wright that early in a game. Could it's all hands on deck, yeah. other than the right, start, right, right on a short leash. You know, yeah. if yeah. well, if you're down strikes. five runs, you, you got to go with Wright and save of all the yeah. All right, so boys, I'm glad they didn't listen to us. Well, first of all, I love Blake Swihart. I have, but we spoke a, a few months ago about. That mm. Blake needed to go, and that he was change not a major league baseball player. Was the term we used. Yeah. yeah, so I can understand if you start listening to the yeah. fans, mm-hmm. you end up <laughs> sitting, sitting next to him. Because I'm glad we didn't get rid of Blake Swihart. Sure. I think he's your starting catcher for the Boston Red Sox in 2019. He's a better pitch hitter than he is starter. <laughs> no, but he is. He's but a don't a, the pitchers love Leon calling the game? But Leon cannot hit a major league yeah. uh, pitch. He's, he's a one <laughs> yeah. I know, but you know. Do you give that up for like the, the love that these pitchers seem to have for him? Well, could they the both? I mean, I, I would imagine uh, both may get a start, get starts. Yeah, in have a, in a, a you know take uh, take right. Leon out after the starter comes out. The only one that seems to want Leon is Sale. Sale. Yeah, right. yeah, but it seems I don't know. There's some stat that like the starters, they, the Leon rest of them kind of like Vasquez. The ERA is low when it, he's calling. Timmy's the game, right. Their right? stats are better with Leon. Right, yeah. clearly. Right. So do you make that sacrifice yeah. and take the hit in the lineup? Yeah. You know, where our offense is already, we had a great offense, you know. And you yeah. go, okay, we're going to sacrifice like a, a little tiny portion of our offense for this, uh, for this a, great. But game the Red Sox love the offense; they yeah. will always lean to the offensive player. Well, maybe you know when the starter comes out, you put Swihart into the well, lineup. Well, to that point, right. Scott, um, how about Devers sort of playing himself back oh into God. the starting? Yeah, four hundred sure yeah. 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 run today. Yeah, Did he really two home yeah. runs today. Like, yeah. Like, 450 he's, he's footer, I think. Yeah. You, so, uh, game, one, game one, who's your starting third baseman? I think uh, Nunez is not um, healthy enough to, to go. So you're saying and Devers? I think Devers, oh, Devers, Devers yeah. yeah. With the idea that Brock Holt uh, will end up, you know, late defensively. Late defensive going, defensive replacement. Or Nunez late in. Yeah, or like right, Nunez. Yeah. If he's healthy enough. Because they're worried about Kinsler. Kinsler has been pathetic well, hasn't for a long time he had that right now. one week. Yeah. Did Cora hint yesterday that Kinsler could uh, that Holt could start at second? Well, I think you're going to probably see Holt against a right-handed pitcher, yeah. and then Kinsler would go against. You got to give the kid credit; he's having a heck Holt? of a yeah. yeah he really yeah, is. I know it's very it's Jimmy G. Yeah, Pete's got you don't have and to take Holt's like that. Well. Oh my God! Yeah. When this thunder is finally still, living I up to his potential, trust me right he's now. He's finally yeah. living up to his potential. <laughs> yeah, right. he's that all-star that yeah, we knew exactly. that was in him. Right, the kid is having a great little season. Oh no, because he hasn't been had to stay at one position for any length of time. They've yeah. been able to move him around, and that's when he's at his best. I know. And I'll agree that he's really come out. He's a fun personality this year. Yeah. Oh, really, yeah. The his personality has really yeah. come out. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Well, the tryout is over, and Hector Velasquez has won it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He yeah. is your 11th pitcher, and he could play a key role in the playoffs. He yeah. could, but only if things go badly. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we actually probably we don't, don't want to see, see much of Hester, H- Hector Velasquez. <laughs> look, you, look, the Red Sox, <laughs> if your 11th pitch is getting in there, things are going wrong. Look, the Red Sox <laughs> probably going to end up playing an extra inning game yeah. in the in the first series, okay? And you're going to see Hector Velasquez probably pitch a 10th inning yeah. or something. And, and it could be the season based mm. on how he does. And I'm telling you, I trust him. <laughs> okay, oh. I, I I appreciate your faith in Hector, and I do believe he'll have a moment. He'll have a moment in the playoffs. I agree with you on that. But to Joe's point, we don't want to see a lot of Hector. No, we don't. Season, no, right? but, but look, <laughs> yeah. look, we have bullpen pain right now oh. because we're seeing guys like Joe Kelly, Drew Pomerantz, and Heath Hembree pitching. But they are not going to be on the roster. They are going to be gone. Scott, you left the other night. Kelly comes in. He... Walked two guys and gave up a single. Yeah, we were up yeah. by like yeah. five yeah. runs. And I yeah. know. And the whole place was just screaming. Yeah. It's this, over. Get this bum out of there. Yeah, yeah. it's over. That but I'm watching him warm up, and you can hear the ball hit the mid. He's yeah. throwing 101. Something wrong yeah. with that guy. So we thought if, that he would squeeze in, right, because of the yeah. of the velocity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I doubt it. He but, can't throw a strike. Yeah. But that would be a shock right now if he made the playoff rush. Shock. Right? 
that you know that's something that John Farrell would do. Like, hey, he's my guy. I'm sticking with my right. guy. Yeah, I'm putting him on the roster. Let's Stop see if Alex Cora. He can't handle coming in with the five run lead in the eighth when we have yeah. first place sewn up, and this guy can't throw a strike. No, Cora okay. can't do it. Then the moment gets when to him. When can he do it? Cora, despite the fact that this is his first year, has enough power right now with the Boston yeah, Red Sox absolutely. to say no. Sure. I'm, I'm, you look, I don't I'm, I'm going to catch all of it if this goes badly. That, that I'm going with my guys I could The trust. other night might have been the nail in Kelly's coffin. Certainly seemed with that good. With that lead and that comfort factor and everything. Just come in and throw some strikes. He couldn't freaking find the plate. Yep. All right, so we, we rag on David Price, and let's give him his props. He's For the sure. best pitcher in the second half. Since the All-Star. Yeah, okay, yeah. so the guy we should be Except ragging against on the Yankees. is Chris Sale. Because Chris Sale, he did not pitch well in the playoffs last year. Will you give me that? Yeah. Okay. All right. We have babied that man well, how about all that? season. How about that? We've babied him. Just quit with the whole shoulder yeah, he soreness. He physically gets worn down. He doesn't have the physique. So by the time he's, he's a got to the playoffs in the past, he's been physically cooked. But, so, Timmy, we're paying him a lot of oh, money. We're going to pay Hold him on. a lot right, more money. I'm third of what you pay about price. this conversation. Are we ragging on him, or are we? Are, do we have to see it before we'll believe no, it? No, I'm saying that Chris Sale has more to prove in the playoffs right now to the Boston Red Sox fans yeah. than David Price. I would no, say about 50-50. I would 50, say, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. say about 50-50. No, yeah. David Price came through in the playoffs last year big time against Is it really? Oh, oh, and the the all not all three of the one, two, and I three starters. Right. Not what he was getting paid $30 million. David Price has pitched a hell of a lot better this year than Chris Sale is as far as you know, going out there every – Except against the Yankees, where that's really yeah. all that matters. Right? I don't know. I, I I think Joe's right in the sense that we need to see it from Sale, Porcello, and from Price. All three have had very really bad, bad postseasons. Yes, I need none to, of them have ever had a good postseason. Yeah. But, but you're right to put Sale in the crosshairs yeah, just exactly. with the other guys. You got to right. put him on the frying pan. Yeah, yeah you got to be fair about yeah, it. All yeah, three yeah, of them. right. Because it's always you know, been he's more likable. That's what it is. Yeah, personality wise, you know. And let's be honest, we hate to root for the Yankees, Just but we're no rooting for the New York Yankees to beat the Oakland A's because that's a million oh, that's times right. more you're, fun. And you're also a Freddy cat about the Yeah, I am a Freddy yeah, cat. I'm not afraid of the A's. They've lost oh, all five been, of their starting rotation. The Red Sox will lose to the A's, and I'm telling you it's because oh, of foul God. ground. It's because of oh, the, that Oakland, the huge, huge foul ground in well, Oklahoma. Don't Oakland the Red Sox have the home field advantage? I know, but oh, if God. we lose one game, we're not coming hey, back guys, home. I'm just guys, telling you that. Jimmy and Joe, God mm-hmm. help yeah. us all yeah. if it's the Well, I'll go back to his losing average. This is why he's one for a thousand. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding, you know, my God. I'm so hot right now. Oh. You don't even touch me. one. You'll get one. burned. One. <laughs> <laughs> All right, save boys. that tape. It's playing over and over in his living room. So the NBA is so cool right oh, now. Yeah. Okay, that Celtics photo day yeah, yeah. was cool. It's, it's was like really the cool. the truck day for the Red yeah. Sox. Yeah, here's the thing. Hey. says that I get tickets to everything. You know, the yeah. only games my kids don't want to be around me at all. I don't blame them. My <laughs> wife doesn't either. They beg me to go to the Celtics sure. games. It's it. They are looking at Instagram. Every, like something happens in an instant. My kid's telling me about something in the NBA. And it's not just the Celtics. It's NBA-wide. They're like yes. movie stars now. Yeah, absolutely. I, but it's four-day cool. Oh, now they got the practice facility right yeah. down the street. Because we have all these great stars. Oh, it's great. I mean, that, that picture of the starting five. I do have a question for you guys, though. I'm interested in what you guys have to say. Are the, As we sit here now, are the Celtics better off than they would have been had Hayward not been injured last absolutely. year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is the ultimate. So we said when Hayward. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Tatum yes. and yes. Brown got they your wouldn't, head They wouldn't have played. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, they better off now. And Irving getting hurt. I would say too. probably yes. But yes. with Hayward having been. And Kyrie being and hurt. Kyrie being hurt. The whole year, Absolutely. most likely they would have ended up in the finals. I think, yeah. And yeah. But they probably would have lost. They would have lost. Absolutely. They would have so, lost. Maybe so a bit let's embarrassed. Assume that, let's assume that Hayward's healthy this year. And let's assume had Hayward been healthy last year, they would have gotten in the finals and lost. Are we better off wow, sitting here never question. hating the finals? Now having yes. Tatum and I think yes. to me, I, I feel badly for Hayward. I think the answer is, yeah, they're yeah. better off. Because one, yeah, one person, Brown, Jason Tatum. Tatum and uh, Rosia. They and all got time Kyrie that too. they would not have gotten. They got exposure. They got experience. Yeah. They, these are guys now playoff experience, who are nationally known. Playoff. They would not have been yeah. nationally known and got the exposure and the big time yeah. uh, under pressure with the spotlight on them time. Yeah. And it, this is Jason Tatum's team. We're no. going to find that out oh, very, wait, very quickly. Uh, and, of course, I predicted that, too. Um, <coughs> what about Kyrie? Kyrie you ever played an NBA game. All right, that's our you show. I want to thank the players. I want to thank everyone behind 
behind the scenes, of course, the lovely and talented Adrian and William the Intern. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in again in two weeks for another edition of the Grand Sanders Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. <laughs> the elephants are in town. Yeah. Here comes the circus. <laughs> <laughs>